Vintage 1984 Quasar console color television. And when you look up the definition of the word hideous, this is what you see. This is hideous. Let's just look at this thing for a minute. Can you imagine going into the TV showroom in 1984 and seeing this and saying, do you guys do financing? Could I get terms on that? I need a payment plan for my new Quasar. Ooh, Dynacolor, 134 channels. Look at this hideous gold trimmer. Is that like nicotine glaze? Ooh, such quality. Vertical hold, auto or manual? Really? Dynacolor. Huh. I mean, this thing is just ridiculous. Look at these stupid floral kind of uh, arrangements. And these... It's all plastic. It's all plastic. Look at this kind of barber pole ribbon setup. I mean, this is like the cheesy clown of color television. It's just... And, and what were interest rates in 1984? Like 14%? Can you imagine getting terms on this thing and paying 14% on it? Just absolutely hideous. Imagine a time when banks actually gave you something to hold your money. Ronald Reagan was president, Chevy Citation was a hot car, and uh, look at what we got today. We got uh, universal basic income, or very close to it. So this is what, this is what came out of that era that we uh, so fondly look back upon. And I want to see the inside here. March 1984, uh, assembled in the U.S. of U.S. and Japanese components to prevent electric shock, do not remove chassis. No user serviceable parts inside. Yeah, well, sounds like a challenge to me. Uh, it is a model number TL9839WP. So let's just do an analysis here. We can see by the amount of kind of, eh, this might be nicotine paste or uh, cigarette glaze uh, buildup that it looks like it's fairly high hour. And let's see. Wow, that is thick. T H I C. Thick. See if we could get a sample off of that here. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. That is what you call cigarette dust. Look at that. How erotic. Wow, look at the look at how thick it is. Anyway, it's got the original CRT, Quasar Corporation, made in USA. That's interesting. Um, I'm not a buff on this era of set. So, looks like Mitsubishi speakers. Or is that Matshusta? I don't know. 
anyway yeah you got a step back for you got this massive cabinet with that little tiny you know chassis that's the same thing that would be in a tabletop and lots of nicotine glaze lots of build up around high voltage Wow, yeah, I'm, I just got a hit of the cigarette. Yep, definitely. Definitely a smoker set. Look at this fine particle board with all the plastic crap screwed onto the front. Let's plug it in. Glaze. When I plugged it in, I thought I heard it power up. Time to get the watt meter. So it's drawing 2.3 watts. Which ain't nothing. Let's see if I... So is this the channel display here? Yeah, you would think, you would think if I clicked it once and it didn't do anything, I would stop clicking it and try something different, but I'm not. I'm going to just sit here and click it for 15 minutes and hope that eventually it turns on. I mean, there is nothing else here, right? Click this some more. Anybody? So I backed that fuse out and it dropped down to one watt. Put that fuse back in, it goes up to 2.3 watts. Uh, I wonder if there's a fuse here. Okay, we've got a fuse here. Okay. The uh, nicotine glaze is so thick on this that I can't see the filament inside. So that fuse is good. And I unplug this. I believe this is the power supply. I unplug this and plug it back in, and again, I could swear I heard it kick on for a second. So I'm gonna try. Nothing. That should be the back of the power switch. So yeah, when I do this, I could swear I hear it, listen. Hear that? It kicked on. Again? Nothing that time. Hear that? It's kicked on. It kicks on. Yeah, I, I hear the high voltage spike up a little bit. So what's going on here? Do we have a bad capacitor and low voltage because of lack of filtering? It's also interesting that we started at, what, 2.3 watts and it's been consistently dropping. Like one of these capacitors is going open. For some reason, I'm, I keep looking at this cap right here, this blue one. Um, God, this thing, I, I'm sure this CRT is super weak, just 
from the number of hours but I'd really like to just see this thing fire up because I'd really just like to bask in the odor of this thing getting hot it's already pretty intense just sitting here but man when this thing got cooking wow I went and dug the Sam's out of the garage for this thing and you know these came in a bunch of different cabinets right but I mean this right here Are you gonna like roll in here and like sniff it or what? But I mean, did you ever, do you ever just see something that is so hideous and ugly that you just want to start kicking it to put it out of your misery? I know it's pretty horrible, isn't it? I think he got in a fight with a one of the local rats or something and uh, I think the rat kind of kicked his ass so he's been on the DL lately anyway um, let's see what we got here this is this is what you had for 1984 JC Penney there's a practically bankrupt, extinct company. But this is when stuff was starting to get like highly, highly modular and integrated and cheesy. So you know, they use this chassis in a bunch of different cabinets and that of course is a much more conservative, respectable looking cabinet than this. Anyway, we're not here to judge the character of the item. We're here to try and fix it. So, uh, okay, here's that board. Let me get to the schematic. Okay, let us see here. So here's our line. The line comes in. Uh, we have a transformer right here, T10, that probably supplies the board, probably supplies the board on the back of that uh, ashtray right there, and this is the flyback right here, this so a lot of our low voltages come off the flyback, so we have to start the horizontal first. So, let's see. Okay, this transformer feeds into, it says CS board, page 52. Here's page 52. Ooh, comp, compumatic schematic diagram. Um... So let's see. Looks like here's our transformer. Yes, T10. That's the same as T10 here. All right. So T10 comes up. We got our fuse, which I believe I pulled that one out and it went down. Then we got a 16 microfarad C10, 16 microfarad at 1,000, 16 volt at 1,000 microfarad, and then we go into a 5 volt regulator, and then that 5 volt regulator feeds all our logic crap. So, of, of course, the buttons aren't going to work if there's no 5 volts to the logic stuff. And I'm sure what this does without getting too deep into it when you push the power button it triggers MPU and PL no, maybe not that's a phase lock loop it triggers one of these to start the horizontal oscillator well we know the horizontal oscillator is starting because we hear it but for some reason the button is just not in doing it so we need to start by checking our 5 volt supply to the um, 
to that board right there. So let's see, C, C10. Another thing we could do, I'm not finding the, the uh, chassis layout for this. Another thing we could do is we could look at the emitter of this transistor and we should have 5 volts here. Uh, let's see if we could find this transistor here. What is it? Uh, so they actually have a flow chart in here, which of course I will never use. Uh, sound okay, no sound. Measure B plus at TP91 should be 129 volts. We kind of have an idea that's there because we get the, the, uh, it, it, it does fire up. So we're going to say we get this here. Remove FO2, measure B plus a cathode of SCR. We're not going to do that because because we know it starts up so check go to step four of regulator check so where's step four oh hell let me do it my way jeez So this, unfortunately, this is all we get of that board. So we're going to have to, Sam's did not cover that board. And all they did was give us these kind of factory schematics of it. So uh, I'm going to have to just get in there. Okay, I'm going to assume that that is the regulator transistor right there. It's all discolored. So base collector emitter. So I want to get onto the emitter, which would be the last, the lead furthest from me. And we'll plug it in and see if we got five volts. Okay, if this is correct, I got zero volts here and I'm grounded onto that can there. Or maybe that's the regulator up there. Yeah, that's probably it. The one on that little heat sink. Okay, I decided not to lay down inside and struggle with it, and I took this thing loose. And I have got to share the amount of cigarette paste. Look at this. I'm, it's so exciting, I can hardly contain myself. Look at this. And I always get comments, why do you wear gloves? Why do you wear gloves? Look at this. Wow. I bet the remote sensor didn't even work because it has so much. Mm. This is incredible. This thing is like... Okay, I'll stop now. All right, regulator. Is that the regulator right there? This makes for the absolute worst working position. Uh, tell you. Okay. So I'm on ground. Yeah, I got the leads reversed because they're jacked up. So we should have AC here, right? Wait a second, that fuse looks like it's open. Got 11 volts on that side and 600 millivolts on that side. This fuse does not look blown inside, it just almost looks corroded. Maybe it's got cancer. Uh, I'm gonna just do a current test right through here. I'm on AC milliamps. Just crap out of my way. Well, it spiked up and it's dropping down 200 milliamps. It spiked up to about 2 amps momentarily. Um, okay, which one of these is? Huh. 
huh it's dropping down 180 milliamps okay I just did the typical thing put a jumper across the fuse hey it would be happy it would be a happy place if this thing su su suicides and uh, I would be fine with that okay we get 10 volts on that side AC 10 volts on that side let's go to DC uh, let's see where is the transistor okay the transistor looks like it is here you got 10 volts DC got 4.91 which is a 5 volt supply let's see what the AC is there indicating a bad filter capacitor we have 300 millivolts uh, AC which is not high let's see what we got here we have uh, zero zero four point zero zero f well it's bouncing around uh, but it's is it coming up all of a sudden so why won't this turn on oh Oh, boy, is that dim. Wow, look at how bad the CRT is. There's no blue. That's an extremely, extremely, extremely dim. Let's see what I got here. Intensity, I guess, is what that is. Sharpness, brightness, picture. Wow, that is dim. I wonder if there was a service switch somebody flipped. Wow. It's even better than I imagined it would be. Wow, as this gets hot, aromatherapy to the max. Okay, it looks like there is a service switch. I wonder where it is. Whenever you get a vertical line like this on a color TV, um, you always want to look at that service switch. Okay, service switch. Looks like it is... Where is it? What board is this? vertical hold well the vertical hold is on front on this TV okay let's try that again this is a schematic for the JC Penny it's it's coming and going come on come on show me the goods there it goes well Well, we got red now. Come on, who's your daddy? There it is. There it is, now it's working. Wow, that's dim. Wow, that is dim.
I think we're gonna need to get some steel toes on for this set. Okay, back to reality. It looks like the service switch is right on the back. So here's the service switch right here. So maybe it was dirty. And no, that doesn't look like it did it. There we go, that got her going. So I mean, obviously we got a cracked solder joint here, but you know, moreover, as kind of just previously determined, by looking at it, the CRT is just spent. I mean, it has just had the life run out of it. It's just dead. Temperatures really start to gear up and Come on, show me the goods. There we go. To get a lot warmer, especially inland as we head into next week. We'll have a look at the full forecast coming up for you in just a little bit. But of course, Jeff, we will send it back to you and again. Remember, yes, good hiking weather tomorrow, but <laughs> things changing a bit next week. <laughs> All right, Deb, look forward to that. Thank you. Well, look at this. Someone left a sectional sofa deep in the Santa Monica Mountains. That's a big no-no. Behind, they also left beer cans, bottles, and cigarette butts. Park rangers posted pictures on Instagram showing the ordeal of removing that sofa. They also wrote, this land is your land, but it's not your living room. It's a living space for all wildlife and visiting people. Rangers pointing out it's also a waste of time and their resources to move that out of there. Running for governor, not enough. The candidate who may have gone halfway across the world to star on re reality TV. I have that next to me. Also at 8, I'm Natalie Brand with a look at how lawmakers from state houses nationwide to the U.S. Congress... It is very, very, very dim. Okay, all of these buttons are like filled with cigarette tar and they don't work. There's lots to love about the all-electric Kia Nero EV. With great styling, awesome tech features, and a 239 mile all-electric range. Visit CarPro's Kia and drive on home for just $149 per month. That's right, only $149 per month. Visit us, CarPro's Kia Glendale. Not everybody wants the same thing. That's why I go with Liberty Mutual. They customize my car insurance so I only pay for what I need. Because I do things a bit differently. What teddy bears? What teddy bears here? Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Frontier's fiber optic internet is here, with upload speeds 25 times faster than cable for only $49.99 per month. Finally, I can experience a humiliating loss to a 13-year-old without lagging out. Finally, I can find out what the capital of Vermont is on all of my devices. Trying to get stricter voting measures passed in some states. Meanwhile, federal lawmakers are looking at those implications of recent Supreme Court rulings, upholding one of the state's controversial voting rules. Here's Kink Alliance Natalie Brand from D.C. Tonight. Jeff, the group of Texas state lawmakers who are still in Washington, D.C. over an election bill standoff in their home state are doing whatever this is what they a bad can CRT to keep looks focused like. on this issue. They've been meeting with U.S. senators, including... $73,000 for that appearance. Campaign spokesperson tells KCAL 9 that she's not pausing her campaign and will be launching a multi-week bus tour across California soon. Jenner tweeted today, I'm honoring a work commitment that I had made prior to even deciding to run. For governor, there is no pause at all on this race to save California. Stocks ended the week with losses across the board. The Dow lost almost 300. Nasdaq was down 115. S&P was down 32. Wells Fargo says it will begin bringing remote workers back to branches September 7th. It'll be based on a worker's job function and location. Some employees will work on a rotating basis at different locations. But that's expected to just be temporary. Wells Fargo will start collecting vaccination status from workers, we're told, starting on Monday. So, as expected, the odor is not disappointing at all. I mean, it is cooking. It is fired up. And it is rocking. Well, in the mountains in the 80s and the 70s, we are looking at a chance of thunderstorms heading our way as well. Would be a tree charcoal beetles <laughs> i could just feel the pinch of that beetle and that charcoal beetles four firefighters 
already dealing yeah. with just treacherous, hot, and uncomfortable conditions. On top of everything else, yep. I got to deal with that. Mm -hmm. I learned something new today: charcoal beetle. Never heard of that before. Interesting. Ed, thank you. Well, as the world watches us, the Periscope Film Channel on YouTube released a clean copy of the Marlboro Story documentary. Since we're on this cigarette-flavored TV, and Anybody who's into documentaries should really take the time to watch this and study it because it's, well, you have to make up your own mind what it is. But I'm going to play a clip here uh, that I think is, yeah. Marlboro Advertising, from its inception in 1954, has consistently developed and grown from our original concept. The refinements along the way set precedents, not just in the cigarette business, but in advertising in general. Few campaigns have been as single-minded in purpose and as unique and fresh in execution. We were the first to use real men in our advertising instead of professional model types. This changed the whole advertising business, not just cigarette advertising. The non-model model became fashionable. In the early years, Marlboro masculinity was expressed through the use of a lot of different types. Then, in the later Settleback ads, we seem to be after a simpler expression of this idea, a single symbol of masculinity. We used athletes as models, lean, hard types, who were the personification of the Marlboro idea. But the one recurring symbol, the one type who projected the sharpest image of the Marlboro man was the American cowboy. In a world that was becoming increasingly complex and frustrating for ordinary man, the cowboy represented an antithesis. A man whose environment was simplistic and relatively pressure-free. He was his own man in a world he owned. And he seemed to be an ideal symbol for our cigarette. The crystallization of seven years of theme development. And we showed him standing in dramatic low-angle photos against cityscapes. Inviting smoke. This is a must watch for a lot of reasons that I can't just explain. But yeah, a, a world that's becoming increasingly com complex for the ordinary man. Think about what they mean by that. Anyway, uh... Since we're in flavor country here, I was just curious because this golden tint, I'm pretty sure, is cigarette tar. This was originally like a brushed aluminum. And it's, you would think that if they were using it, it would be clean, but maybe they were using it with, with, with an aru. Could I like stutter some more? So let's try a little Windex here and just see if I'm wrong. Nope. I'm not wrong. This is all cigarette glaze. This thing was originally brushed aluminum. So that means this whole cabinet is coated with this tar. And look at that. This whole cabinet and all these little, the grill and all of that is all coated with this tar. So, here's what I'm thinking. This is garbage. Um, I would say dog bed, you know. You, you can't save them all, really. The tube is shot. Um, it's got cold solder joints in the vertical section, obviously. And I just ruined the finish by cleaning it. Um, no one's going to want it as a dog bed. No dog would get near this thing. The dog would get cancer. No cat would get near it. The cat would get cancer. So I think we're just going to have to ship this one. Because... I mean, literally destroyed by cigarettes.
Same thing with this. See that white spot right there? That's the color this board is supposed to be. I mean, it's like I can't even... I don't even want to keep the chassis out of this. It's so nasty. thought it might be interesting to test this tube if I have... I should see if I have a, a socket adapter for this, but I kind of doubt it. <laughs> Even nicotine glaze on the uh, look at the look at the nicotine crust. We wanted to tell the world that we were leaders. That wherever people smoked for flavor. That was Marlboro Country. This is Marlboro Country. The canyons of New York or Colorado. From the Golden Gate to the Great Divide. In all 50 states, the big switch is to Marlboro. Marlboro's richer flavor comes from the rare breed of tobaccos in its Richmond, Virginia recipe. The exclusive select trait filter smooths, but doesn't tame the taste. You get a lot to like with a Marlboro filter, flavor, pack or box. Settle back in Marlboro country. Okay, the book says it uses socket 22, and I have socket 22, so let's see if my, uh, TV here, look at the color difference there, uh, let's see, setup, wow. Starting to get a little warm out here and the stench is starting to activate. Okay, 6.3. Uh, set cutoff. Of course, I don't expect there to be any cutoff on this tube. Test. I knew it was dead, but not not that dead. That's the actual emissions test. That's not cutoff. I got I got all my cutoffs all the way up. I don't think I've ever seen a color tube so dead. Go back. I'm at 6.3. We could go up a little bit on the filament voltage. We'll go up a tad. 50 here. 50 on your G1. I mean, they're dead, but they're equally dead. This is exactly what I would expect. CRT has emphysema. Yeah, I don't think I've seen a color tube that was so dead. So yeah, this thing's trash. What's, int what's interesting is I have a JVC with a CRT that's testing all up in yellow and green, and it's got horrible smearing. And I'm starting to really wonder if that's the CRT or something else.
I mean, look at how dead this is. Yeah. Garbage, not even usable as a cat bed. This then is the Marlboro story. A story of how a specialty cigarette developed an image so powerful it became a part of the American language. A masculine image, so well defined that today the cowboy is synonymous with Marlboro. And Marlboro country has become a part of the American idiom. And when you add music to the cowboy image, there's no doubt about it. You are in Marlboro country. I don't know if this is going to show up on camera, but you can see there was something sitting here. And something sitting there. And it was preventing the cigarette paste from depositing. So you can see how much darker right here along the edge is. cigarette glaze Marlboro country grilled so you know for those who were saying why oh why did you hurt that poor console tv why did you eol that poor console tv well you should understand if you made it to this part of the video i guess that's trash um you know there's no more of these being made they're so rare they're so rare well here's the Here's the problem with it from a, you know, my, my perspective, which is it's easy as hell to get these things and impossible to get rid of them. So, you know, whatever opportunity I can take, I will. And what's happening with this one is a gentleman's going to adopt it and put a more modern, like a modern Panasonic CRT set in here. So what I'm doing is I'm just pulling the... I'm just going to pull the CRT and the electronics. He's going to clean the cigarette glaze and uh, fit a more modern, like I say, I think a Panasonic or an RCA set in here. I'm just going to trash the tube. The other thing that happened with this TV, when I came out to actually set up and do the EOL, I wanted to just do channel 3-4 like I was doing earlier in the video. Well, the tuner wouldn't lock at all. The tuner wouldn't lock. So what I ended up doing is putting this wire here. You can see I cut the trace. Cut the trace right there for the IF from the tuner into the IF strip. And I fed... IF frequency into here from the BT modulator 45.75 because the tuner failed so I might just pull the horizontal output transistor off of this and trash it if you ever wanted to see what a gun looked like on the inside it's actually hard to see because of all the cigarette coffee grounds here but this is a banded CRT this is why the later ones don't have a safety glass see this metal strap metal strap that's wrapped around here this does the same thing as a safety glass that you see me remove on the older tubes and also there's a full metal 
jacket that's folded over. So it's like a metal brace that's strapped on. You can see the metal. This is the strap. You can see how this makes it very strong. Look at here's the glue line where the bell is glued to the face. It's actually glued together. Ooh, the Blambulance be active tonight. Do I save these speakers or do I let these go? See what they look like. Hmm. Cigarette scented. Look at the look at the nicotine tar. Look at the tar buildup. Do I want these? I don't even want these in the house. Like I don't want any part of this in the house. This is nasty. Look at the buildup of on the the top. Look at that. Coffee grounds. Well, so there it is. That's how it all ended. The nice thing is you can pick it up with two fingers now.